You may have noticed newly designed benches popping up all across the seawall. These 70 benches were redesigned as part of an artist boat program called Project SIT. And we are here looking at Project SIT, which is the seawall interpretive trail, which is 70 concrete benches have all been beautified with mosaic wraps and the tops have all been individually painted by artists to interpret something about our island, Galveston Bay, or the Gulf of Mexico's uh, natural history. You know, uh, we're really fortunate that we live on this beautiful island and um, as residents here we understand a lot about the environment that those who visit us don't necessarily know. So the benches are an amazing way to educate the population that they come about the Gulf and why the water is a different color, why the sand looks like it is, what is that green springy seaweed uh, on the beach and what does it do. So in, instead of having a sign, we have these beautifully decorated, artistically created uh, benches. At the same time, from a tourism perspective, what that does for us is it creates an experience. It invites people into our environment. It gives them a glimpse and shares with some th them with something that they might not know about. So it's, it's a very valuable asset that we have on the seawall now, uh, not only to educate people about our environment, but to create a unique experience here in Galveston that they won't find in other places. Project SIP became possible due to the many generous sponsors who reached out. It was even included into the City of Galveston Seawall Beautification Program, primarily funded by the Federal Transit Administration. This community effort began as Artist Boat reached out to its first sponsor, Reliant Energy. These first benches were creatively painted by Galveston students. Artist Boat, Carla Clay, reached out to NRG and uh, described a project she had in mind called Project SIT. Uh, and it involved, what we got out of it was uh, public art, uh, kids, education, <clears throat> stuff about the, uh, the beach and uh, the bays around here. And while I really couldn't get my hands around the whole thing, it, it intrigued us and uh, we got behind her. She said she had the residency set up with the uh, school children. They had the artist, the kids were the artist. And uh, we were looking for somebody who could help with the implementation here in the field. And we felt like that was a good fit for us. We sponsored 10 of these. That's what kind of got the whole project started. And of all of them, they cover a whole bunch of good subjects, but I kind of like the one we're sitting on right now, which is the, the marine mammals. As, you know, you, who can not looking at uh, whales, nice pictures of whales and learning about them. They're just they're too, fun to, too fun not to be enjoying. We let it, left it up to Artist Boat. Artist Boat got with the KIPP students and they went back into the classroom, developed the art on paper, and then after that took that artwork and put those on the individual tiles. Uh, as Mr. Fistler said, we sponsored about 10 of these uh, benches out of around 70, uh, and they're really neat from a science perspective. Uh, they basically illustrate what you see in the marine environment. It starts out with the different themes. One of the themes, like this one, is the Southeast Texas Tidal, uh, tidal Salt Marsh. There's uh, the Flower Gardens, which is the coral uh, reef out in the Gulf of Mexico. And then the other thing that it switched to was different uh, zones, and you remember, may remember that from Finding Nemo, the Zone song, it was one of my favorite songs, and some of those zones include the Intertidal Zone, which is the salt marsh, and then there was the Neuritic Zone, which is basically the zone that you see out in front of us, the near shore zone. Then there's the Pelagic Zone, where most of the whales live, that's the deep water, and then the Abyss is the very bottom of the Pelagic Zone. So it uh, basically brings everything together, and here's a perfect example. You can see the different animals and plants that you might see in a salt marsh. And this allows the person just walking along the shoreline to see something like that and then actually see a very similar natural habitat right outside of the viewscape. Professional artists were also called to design and paint the benches, many of them eager to promote the island and its ecosystem. My childhood, I was always around the ocean and the, uh, the Gulf. I spent my summers at my family's beach houses in Palacios. Sargent and even one here on the seawall in Galveston and once I heard about Project SIT um, and it was an open artist call I definitely knew it was something I wanted to get involved with so I applied and this was the bench that I was selected to do. I've always loved the water. Um, I've always loved to watch people swim and fish and crab along the way and you know as kids we grew up crabbing 
Mom and Dad was always bringing us to the beach or to the rocks. So I've always had a love for the, for the water. Um, somehow I just started to put things together. And um, as I said, when I put part of the bench together, I wanted part of me to come out, which is the reality of not only adding to the life cycle of the shrimp and the crab, but we become part of that life cycle as well. Uh, we become involved when we, you see the people crabbing, you see the people eating their shrimp cocktails, um, going down to buy and resupply their food for gumbos or for cookouts and everything like that. All of the benches evolved. Certainly the first one I did, I was not uh, familiar with this kind of paint. It's made from clay and it dries very quickly and it soaks right into the tiles. One night I worked two and a half hours on it, came down to see what it looked like. I couldn't even see it. The paint had all soaked into the tiles. So there was a definite learning curve on working with the paint. There's a lot of editing and you can't, you know, just put white out on it. You gotta sometimes start over or certainly modify. So yes, every one of them was an evolutionary process. When they see the painting, I hope that I, I brought out enough color that's pleasing to the eye and that they enjoy looking at the bench and enjoy some of the other things I've added to it that is Galveston, that it is the wildlife, the sea life here. Um, and then walk away saying, you know, that, that was a pretty neat looking bench. I hope that those visiting my bench will learn some new facts about bottlenose dolphins and in turn be more conscious of their responsibility to be friendly to the environment that we share with the species. Most of the benches showcase the diverse ocean life that surrounds Galveston and the Gulf, like the Flower Garden Banks, a location most people don't know about. Offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, about 100 miles from south of Galveston, Texas, there is a whole series of seamounts. Seamounts are, are rocky areas that protrude from the surrounding mud bottom of the Gulf of Mexico and have been pushed up over time from underlying geological processes. Now these rocky uh, outcrops provide habitat to a variety of very important marine species in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, including uh, fishery species like red snapper and grouper, a, vari a variety of sources. But the flower garden banks are, are unique and special because they also provide habitat for the construction of, of true coral reefs. Coral reefs that have developed here in the northern Gulf of Mexico, which is very surprising because this is much farther north than uh, typically uh, that coral reefs are able to, um, able to exist. So this is something that's very special for, um, for the people of Galveston, for the, the people of Texas, that we have this incredible resource right off our shores that is uh, one of the most important uh, marine areas anywhere in the world. The one thing that I hope that visitors and, and residents alike get out of this particular bench is to, to learn about the Flower Garden Banks. It's, um, it's a, somewhat surprising to me that, that many people, and maybe even most people right here in this area, are not even aware that this incredible place even exists. And that, um, so that's the primary thing that, that will, might uh, pick someone's interest, you know, to find out more about the Flower Garden Banks. Some of the benches also hold personal significance to honor people who live and have lived on the island. It's hard to buy mom presents because she just wants very little. And this was so perfect because I'd been working with Artist Boat at the time and uh, found out about Project Sit. And so we talked it over with the whole family and everybody decided this would be a great way to honor her 90th birthday. You know, it was, they had a list that you could sponsor different types of benches and some of them are, you know, to go about Gulf wildlife or the environment and some are historical to Galveston. And, and when we saw the Balinese room was one of the topics, we thought this is perfect because her husband proposed to her at the Balinese room and, you know, she tells great stories about it and remembers being there with her parents and that now with the Balinese room gone, this is a great marker of that, but also just to honor her and her born on the island, you know, status with something that was, and, and another thing, it's something that's gonna be here a hundred years from now. 
So we're really happy to be part of all of that and you know, to give mom a birthday gift like that too. The benches for me, in particular, the one for uh, Silly Springy Seaweed for, uh, that we dedicated to Robert Webster had a lot of significance for me. Uh, first, because we battle and we battled seaweed uh, uh, significantly for the last couple of uh, years, and it's a good educational tool, but also because it's a quiet spot that I can go and sit and literally, uh, when I've had questions and I need to reflect, I go and sit on Robert's bench and I imagine that I am conversing uh, with Robert and gaining the insight and the wisdom and looking out into the ocean. And it's such a peaceful, tranquil, relaxing moment to reconnect with nature um, and reconnect with the, the wider universe. And that's why those benches are important for me to take a break. The point of the benches is not only beautification and to do something very, very different and I think even inspiring with what were once just concrete blocks, right? We've taken something existing and made it better. Artist Boat's very good at that. But the second point of having them is to commemorate certain events, incidents, people, places, nature, right here in Galveston. It's all about Galveston Island. Every one of these is a different part of our history, past, present, and even future. And so you can actually learn a great deal from reading the text on these benches, even though it has to be fairly short, because they're not that big. Uh, there are many facts that even I didn't know that I read from a bench of all places. Public art can last a long time. As we know, there are mosaic floors that were uncovered in Greece thousands of years later. I don't know if this project will last that long, but I hope it lasts a long time. I hope that Artist Boat finds ways to add to Project SIT, but mostly I just hope that it generates a sense of pride in visitors and residents that we live in an amazing place and uh, it's important to steward this place.